We're so glad that you're able to be here with us tonight. And we've tried to squeeze you all into the main part of the hall so that you'll get the best view of the performance tonight. So over the last few months, the Kids Church children have been learning about the Bible. We've been learning about the books of the Bible and a little bit about what's in each of those books. So our presentation tonight is called The Amazing Book. So we'd like you to sit back and listen to what's said and what's sung and we hope that you will pick up the message throughout the presentation. So I'm going to hand over to our professor here now to take over from me. Welcome to History of the Bible 101. I am Professor E. Wiseman, and today we will be learning all about the Bible. We are going to take a look at the amazing book, looking into who wrote it, the books, and the stories in it, and why it is one of the best-selling books of all time. The Bible, also known as the Holy Bible, the Good News, the Good Book, or God's Holy Word, is a collection of scriptures that are written by over 40 authors from different backgrounds over 1,500 to 2,000-ish years ago, and is God's instruction book for us on how we should live. It has 66 books and is divided into two sections, the Old Testament and the New Testament. These books include laws, stories, prayers, songs, and wise words. First, we are going to take a look at the writers of the Bible. They say that some 40 men were the writers of the Bible, 1,600 years in the making in over three different continents too, written in at least three different languages and with lots of pages. When the writers of the Bible were through, there were some farmers, some lawyers, and some, fish, some fishermen, and some kings, some rich men, some poor men, and a few plain old people in between. One doctor, a taxman, some generals, and some priests. There were men from the city and men from the farm, men from the greatest down to the least. In the Old Testament, Moses wrote the first five books called the laws. In the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, and John read the Gospels with Luke. The Psalms were written by a man named David, a shepherd with a sling and a stone, and Proverbs who were written by Solomon the king, the wisest man ever known. There were some farmers, some lawyers, some fishermen, and some kings. Some rich men, some poor men, and a few plain old people in between. One doctor, a taxman, some generals, and some priests. There were men from the city and men from the farm, men from the greatest down to the least. Next, we will look at the books of the Bible. Again, there are 66 books in the Bible, and the books are divided into two sections, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament was written before Jesus was born and has 39 books in all. The New Testament, however, was written during and after Jesus' time on earth and has 27 books. Some book names have special meanings like Genesis, which means beginning, and Psalms, which means songs. Others are named after people like Ezra, Esther, John, and Samuel. 
So how do you remember all 66 books? Well, if there is something really important and you really need to remember it, so you never ever forget it, you put it into a song. The Bible contains nearly a million words, and these words tell us stories. Let's listen to some of the stories written in the Bible. There's a story in the Bible about a flood that covered the land, and how a man named Noah and his family were about the Lord's command. Oh no, but the very first story that I think that's telling now, how about you? You can read it in the Bible, just take a look and see. <laughs> The 
there's a story there's a story within the Bible about the Battle of Jericho, how the wall the city came tumbling down as they shouted and the horns to blow. Now they marched seven times all around then around. Then the wall of the city came tumbling down. You can read it in the Bible, just take a look and see. story written in the Bible about a giant and a shepherd boy. David killed that giant with a sling and a, with a stone and a sling. And the man and the man and the king man shouted for joy. David saved the land and he, when he won the fight, they had a happy time in camp that night. You can read it in the Bible, just take a look and see. <laughs> There's a story in the Bible about th three young Hebrew men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, wouldn't bow. No, they wouldn't give in. They put them in the furnace, but they did not burn. Oh, what lesson that the king did learn. You can read it in the Bible. You can take a look and see. There's a story written in the Bible about Daniel and the lion's den. Now the king did all that a king could do, but they still had to put him in. Daniel stayed all night in that lion's den, but the very next day he was out again. You can read it in the Bible, just take a look and see. Many people consider it to be much more than just a book. Some people say it's a very good book with treasures old and wise. To others, it's only fairy tales that children memorize. Some even claim it's out of date and useless for today, but many read it all the time and here is what they say. It's more than ink and paper, it's more than word to read. It's a letter of love from up above, special delivery. Some like to keep it on a shelf with novels and magazines, while others look through it curiously and wonder what it means. Some scholars learn every chapter and verse and knowledge they achieve, but those who read it with their hearts have come to believe. It's more than ink and paper, it's more than words to read. It's a letter of love from up above special delivery. So today we have looked at the Bible, its books, writers, stories, and why it is so special to so many people. Now I'm going to have a pop quiz to see which of you are paying, today, paying attention to today's lesson. Yes, that's all you in, sitting in the seats. I will ask a question. If you know the answer, I want you to put up your hand along with shouting your name. My helpers will be looking for the first person. The first question. How many books are there in the Bible? Question two, how many writers wrote the Bible?
Question three. How many words does the Bible have? Question four. What were the names of the men put into the fiery furnace? Question five, what does the word Psalms mean? And the final question, give me another name for the Bible. Great job. You are all paying attention to today's lesson. Before we finish today's lesson, the kids church have been learning the books of the Bible along with actions. They're here to teach them to you. I hope you learned something new and interesting today. I'll see you next week for more on the Bible.
students and friends, can you please help us to sing our song again? is just a wrap up of what the kids have been doing and they really enjoy God's story the Bible so part of God's story is about the Bible and it goes like this the Bible is no ordinary book it's all about God and how much he loves us now you might think the Bible is a big long list of rules and names but it's not you might also think it's about a bunch of perfect people who always followed God's rules. But really, the Bible is a bunch of stories, poems, letters, and even songs that are all telling one big story that have been put together into one big book. And everything in the Bible is true, like how God created the whole world and everything in it. And the story is about Jesus, God's son. And in between, there are lots of stories written by all kinds of people. But the amazing thing about the Bible is all these stories came from God. The first part of the Bible is called the Old Testament. It tells the story of God's special family, the Israelites, and how God promised that through them, he would bless the whole world. To help them do that, God gave them the Torah or the law. These were ways for the Israelites to live differently than other nations by welcoming people who were different from them, forgiving each other and following God. The only problem was no one was able to follow all the rules. This is what the middle part of the Bible is about. People tried as hard as they could, but they kept making mistakes. And every time God forgave them and promised them that someone would come, a king, a rescuer, who would actually follow all of God's rules and show us what God is like. Well, Israel waited a long 
time for the king, who was also the rescuer. While they were waiting, Israel had good kings and not so good kings. Sometimes the people in charge forgot about God and started to worship other gods. And sometimes they even got taken over by other countries. And whenever God would do something amazing, like when he saved three guys from a fiery furnace, or when he sent messages to prophets like Jeremiah and Ezekiel, or when ordinary people like Ruth decided to be a part of God's family, people would write it down. They wanted to remember what God had done and teach their kids what God was like. He's powerful, he's loving, and he's good. In some stories, God reminds us he's a good king, powerful and mighty, someone who saves his people from danger. In other stories, God reminds us he's a good father taking care of his children, or like a good shepherd, gently taking care of his sheep. Now that's all in the Old Testament. The next part, the New Testament, starts with four books full of stories about Jesus. Jesus is God's son, and he lived a perfect life without breaking any of God's rules. He taught people about God and showed people how to be like him by helping those who were poor and sick. Then Jesus died for our wrong choices and came back to life, which was a pretty amazing thing. It was so amazing that people made sure they wrote down the stories about Jesus. And as more and more people started following Jesus, there were more and more amazing stories to write down. Like when the Holy Spirit came down like wind on Pentecost, or when people who follow Jesus perform miracles, or even when one of Jesus's friends, John, had a crazy dream about what it will be like when Jesus comes back to rule the entire world. After Jesus came back to life and then went to heaven, yeah, that happened. People who followed Jesus wanted to put together all these stories about the law, the Israelites, Jesus, and the early church into one big book. It took a few tries before everyone agreed on what parts should be in what order, but that's how we have this big book called the Bible. Today, people still read the Bible all over the world because what was true a long time ago is still true today. God always stays the same. God still speaks to us. He forgives us and loves us, and he's always good. And when we read the Bible, we can still learn about who God is and what he's like. The Bible says all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. And that's the story of the Bible. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. The Bible is a book of stories about God. The Old Testament is about Israel. The New Testament is about Jesus and his followers. We can still learn about God today. And that's a part of God's story.